9.6 techniques for solving equations and inequalities. So in this lesson they show you a couple of different methods to solve equations. Now some of them you already know, um, most of them you already know, but they do a lot of work with uh, guess and check and also work with your graphing calculator. So I don't know how um, how familiar you are with your graphing calculator, or whether or not your teacher puts a lot of emphasis on it. So I'll do one example that uses the graphing calculator, but if you have um, if you have other questions about graphing calculators and and want me to do a little video on you know how to find points of intersection or whatever, just let me know. Okay, so what I'm doing is some questions right out of your textbook because, uh, and I've chosen a variety of different questions to give um, a nice sampling of what you should know how to do. So the first one is from question one and it is graph number two and they have f at x being this purple graph up here and g at x being the red graph. And they ask you to find out where they're equal, greater, less than, greater than, and equal to. So that's pretty easy. You can do it easily just by looking at it, right? So you can see where, being greater than means where is it above or where are the y values higher than the graph below it. Simply, that's all it means. So where is f at x equal to g at x? Well, you know how to do that. All you have to do is find these two points right here. And I've done some, you have to estimate them because they don't tell you, but this is a point 2, 2, and this is a point minus 1 and minus 1.5. So f at x is g at, equal to g at x when x is equal to minus 1 and 2. And there you go. That's simple. Where is f at x greater than g at x? So again, what you want to look for is where are the y values higher for f at x than g at x. So here, g at x is above it. And now f at x is greater than g at x. And past this point, it's below it. So in this case, you want to be between the two, right? So you want minus one to be less than x to be less than two. Okay, make sure you're using your inequalities properly and um, that's all you have to do. Where's f at x less than or equal to g at x? f at x less than or equal to g at x. So now I wanna know where is the function f at x less than or equal to, so I'm going to include this point. So here it is less than, the y values are lower. Here would be greater than, and here would be less than. Don't forget that this graph is continuing up, so these values would be underneath it. So for C, we've got for x less than or equal to negative one, and for x greater than or equal to two. Where's f at x greater than or equal to g at x? Well, that's right between here and here, right? You can see the y values are higher. So the height of the function is greater in that, that zone where x is between minus one and two. Now, do we want less than or equal to? Absolutely we do because we're, we have the equal sign here. Okay, number two is a guess improvement question. Now these, um, some people get a little frustrated with them, but you want to think a little bit before you start, like what values make sense, right? What would make sense in this question? So here I want to know where is the cos of x equal to x. So I'm just going to make a really quick sketch. So here's cos x, like this, equal to x. So in this case we'd have a line like this. Between 0 and pi over 2. So pi over 2, remember this is pi, so pi over 2 is where cos x is equal to 0. So I'm looking in this little domain here between 0 and pi over 2. So you might want to start by just making a guess here. Now you know that pi over 2 is approximately 1 point, well you're just doing pi divided by 2, right? Pi divided by 2 to get radians. So 1.57. Now 1.57 is going to be for if x was equal to 1.57 it would be way up here somewhere, right? Because we know that the range of cos is only between plus and minus one. So we definitely want something that is going to be less than one. So let's say we try um, x equals 0.8. So what's the cos of 0.8? Is that equal to 0.8? And if you get out your calculator, let's hope the calculator shows up on the screen here. 
finding it's pretty dark. So the cos of 8, make sure you're in radians. Or sorry, not 8.8. .8. What am I doing here? Cos of 0.8 is 0.696. So it's about 0.97. 0.697. Okay, so that's not equal to 0.8. So you know that you want to try something a little bit smaller, right? So let's try the cos of 0.76. So cos, and you can do this pretty quickly, right? Just start plugging in some numbers. And I get 0.72. So I'm going in the right direction. They are getting closer. This was a spread of 1. Now we're only a spread of 0.04. And um, let's just jump down by twos here and see what happens. So let's do the cos of 0.74, cos 0.74, and I get 0.738. That's pretty darn close, 0.738. Okay, so if x was 0.74, then this would be pretty darn close to the solution. So we're gonna say, um, I don't remember what they wanted you to Oh, one decimal place. Okay, so x is approximately equal to 0.7. One decimal place. Hmm, that's not very accurate, is it? We could have dimmed them too. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. 0 equals the sine of 0.25x squared, where x is between 0 and 5. Okay, so if x is between 0 and 5, the sine of x, remember, like this, this is 2 pi, so this would be three point, uh, sorry, 6.28. So 5 radians is somewhere around here. I want to know when is this equal to 0. So I know that the sine of 0 is 0, and the sine of pi is 0. So 0, pi. The 0 one, I could just say, well, definitely x equals 0 is going to be one of my solutions. But how do I get this solution here? So I want this to be equal to pi. So all you do is do that. 0.25x squared is equal to pi. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do pi, and I'm going to divide it by two, 0.25, and I get x squared. I want to get that out of the way so I can write x squared is equal to 12.566. I'm just going to leave all those numbers in there and take the square root of that answer, and I get 3.5. Four, four, and they want just to one decimal place. So I'm going to say 3.5. So if you work that all backwards now, if I put in 3.5 here, square times 0 0.25, I should get pretty darn close to sine of zero. And if you left all your decimals in, of course, it would be zero. Okay, so let's move on to question three, which is number four. So they give you that the f at x equals 3 times the cube root of x, and g at x equals the tan of x. They gave you this graph in the um, in the homework solution, in the, in the textbook, sorry. And I want to know on the interval between 0 and 3, that's why they ended it here, so you had a solid dot here and here. On the interval between 0 and 3, where is f at x less than g at x, f at x equal g at x, and f at x greater than g at x? So the easiest one, of course, is where is it going to be equal? Because there's only one point, well, actually there's two, right here and right here. So I need to know what this point is here. Where is f at x equal to g at x? And this is where you need to bring in your calculator. And I've entered the two equations here. So it's probably good for you to see how it was entered. So I have 3x to the power of minus Oh, sorry, not minus, just one third. 3x to the power of one third and tan x. And if I go to graph it now, I end up with this. Now I could make a much better drawing here by changing the window because I only want the window to go between um, 0 and 3. So I want x max to be 3. And that will give us an, a graph that looks much more... Um, familiar to what is being drawn here. Now how to find an intersection point of two graphs is very simple. You go second and then right above this trace number it says calculate and I go to intersect which is number five and it starts giving me curves. It says first curve and you see that little 
X here, so you want to make it on that curve. I hit enter, and it automatically jumps to the second curve. And I will hit enter again, and then it always says guess. You don't want to guess, say tell me the answer. Hit enter one more time, and it gives you the intersection point of 1.272 How much accuracy could you even want? Okay, so we're rounding, I think, again to um, one decimal place here. So this would be 1.3 here. X is 1.3. Um, I don't know what the Y coordinate was. I've got it here. 3.3. Uh, Okay, so 1.3 and 3.3. So where are they equal? The only place they're going to be equal is here at the beginning. So we'll put x equals 0 and x equals 1.3. And that's the solution to this part. Where is f at x less than g at x? Okay, now remember you've got a tan graph here, which is this red one here. And you know that there is an asymptote for the tan, tan function, the tan function, I was going to say. So you know it goes like this, it goes like this, has a little asymptote here and here. And you remember where this asymptote here, here is? This is pi over 2, right? So what's pi over 2? So it's probably a good idea for you to give it as a decimal. Pi over 2 is 1.57. So I want to know, this is 1.57, so I've got this asymptote right about here, 1.57. I'm just going to write it as pi over 2 because that's accurate. Okay, so um, where is it less than g at x? So f at x less than g at x. So here it's above, right? So that's not the answer. That would be the one over here. But as we go from here to here, in this zone here it's under this graph but as soon as I go past the asymptote here you see how all of a sudden now this is above this graph so I have to stop here for f at x um, less than okay so I've got less than between 1.3 and 1.6 I'm going to write it this way this time or you could do it like this right whoops that's decimal and round brackets, that's interval notation. <clears throat> round brackets does not include the point. So I've got it between here and here, that's when it's greater than. And then it continues again, right? Like once I go past, once I go past this asymptote, oh no, I'm less than, sorry. That's over here. Okay, so that's it. It's less than from here to here. Everywhere else it's greater than. So it's going to be greater than for x is, we shake the paper around here. So I have x between 0, 0, um, I think now here, greater than between 0 and 1.3. Okay, so between 0 and 1.3. And then again, it's going to be past here. So I want greater than, so I'm going to use the asymptote value of 1.6 and all the way to 3. Okay, so it's greater than, so not equal to, so you don't include these points. So you could also write that as um, 0, 1.3, union, 1.6, comma, 3. It's another way of writing it using interval notation. Depends on what your teacher likes. Okay, so let's go to the last question here, which is a word problem. It's very longly worded in your textbook. I'll summarize it quickly. It says, in British Columbia in 1997, there were 2.3 million pine beetles, decreasing at 4% per year. While in Washington State, at the same time, they had 1.95 million pine beetles and decreasing at 3%. And the question wants to know, when are you going to have when will there be about the same number of pests in the sections of forest under study in each jurisdiction? So you need to make a formula for this one. So let's say the number at time t, and this is going to be BC, not the old BC, but British Columbia, is going to be equal to the initial number, 
Ooh, we start with the initial. And how is the rate changing? It's going down by 4%. Remember, 4% is 0 0.04 as a decimal. I subtract that from 1 because I want to make it smaller. That's decreasing to the power of t. And in Washington State, the number at time t is going to be 1.95 decreasing at 3%, so that's 0 0.997 to the power of t. Okay, so now I'm going to set these equal to each other and solve. 2.3 times 0 0.96 to the power of t is equal to 1.95 times 0 0.97 to the power of t. Now, what you, sometimes the teacher will ask you to solve that using a graphing calculator, or you could simply do 2.3. This is the way you can do it yourself, right? 2.3 divided by 1.95 equals 0 0.97 to the t divided by 0 0.96 to the t. So now if we take the log of both sides, remember that this, um, let me just write it out here for a second. It's hard to think somebody's at my door, probably bringing a Christmas present. Okay, so I have it like this. If this is to the t and this is to the t, then this is to the t. And then all you have to do is take the log of both sides. So log of 2.3 divided by 1.95. And that's going to be equal to t times the log of 0 0.97 divided by 0 0.96. And if you do that nicely, you should get... I think I got like 15 point, 15.93. So when will they be? Your teacher would probably wants you to give a nice answer, like that's almost 16 years away. So 1997 plus approximately 16. Depends on how much accuracy, accuracy your teacher wants. So 6 and 7 are 13, and 2 and 9 is 11, so 2013. And that has already passed us by. We're almost at 2020 as I record this message. So that's um, 9.6. We only have one more section to do and then exam review.